Knowledge is information. We can have information. But wisdom is knowing how to apply it. 
I seen a picture this past week of a, a young boy, teenage years, maybe early 20s. He was standing in the sun. He had a pair of sunglasses sitting hanging from his tank top. He had a backwards hat, and he's going like this to block the sun. You know, there's a lot of people that have information, but they don't have the wisdom to apply. He had all the tools he needed to keep the sun out of his face, keep it out of his eyes. He had to hat, he could flip it around. He had the sunglasses hanging on his shirt, but yet he's using his hand. There is a difference between wisdom and knowledge. And with that being said, people can have information, but they don't know how to apply it. And the question we're going to pose today is, are people, or I have at the top of the, your head, are heathen really lost? Are the heathen really lost? Are people really lost if they never been to church or heard the gospel message? Are there other ways that they can know that God exists? Well, the first step we're going to do is to find who is a quote-unquote heathen. Because when we look at the Word of God, he states in Psalms, I think it's 119, Ask of me and I will give you the heathen for your inheritance. Who is the heathen? These are people who have never heard the gospel of message. people who have never heard the, of God, who have never been in church, those people that may be in the most remote tribes in the world, they still have a quote-unquote life. They still have something pointing them to God. They are not without life. They are not without excuse. And when we look at this, there are four different lights, quote-unquote, that people have that show them God, that God exists. And when we look at the very first light, it is their spiritual light, quote unquote, or God awareness. If we look at the world around us, it's not hard to see that everyone's aware that God exists, or a God exists. And it doesn't matter where you go. We are living in a country that was based on and founded upon religion. It was founded upon Christianity. It was presented in such a way that people could come here from freedom to in freedom <coughs> to worship. If we go to the most, and while we may have all these, we might be a very religious nation, and while we look around, we are no longer a Christian nation, but there are maybe many religions. So we have many point, ways pointing to a God. I'm not just going to say the God, but a God. If we go to the most remote tribe, someone who's never ever heard of the gospel message, who's never heard of God before, what do you think the chances are that there's going to be a quote-unquote sacrifice at some point in the religious ceremonies, and that they're going to be offering it up to a deity at some point? Chances are it's going to be pretty great. Because even the individual who has never heard the gospel message, who's never heard of the Bible, each one of us is instilled within us a God consciousness. What is that? The fact that we know that there's someone greater than us. Someone that probably created everything around us. Someone who even created us. And for some reason, we know that this person is angry, and we have to offer up something to appease them. Not that I'm saying that God is angry all the time, but why would God be angry with us? Because of sin. There's sin in our own, and that makes God angry. It makes him upset. It displeases him. And when we look at the Bible, we know that from the very beginning, when Adam sinned, a sacrifice had to be offered up to appease God. Because that sin had to be done away with. It had to be covered. It had to be made up for. When we look at a heathen nation, they may not know exactly why, but there's going to be some form of ritual where they're offering up a sacrifice to try to appease their God. Whether it's for crops, whether it's for rain, they're trying to appease them and make them happy. 
There is a God consciousness that is instilled in each and every single individual that is born. That we know that God or a God or somebody greater than us exists. And even on a side note, for an individual to claim that they're an atheist, there are a lot fewer atheists in this world than people that claim to be atheists. Most atheists are really agnostics. They think that there might be somebody higher, they're just not sure. An atheist outright knows that God does not exist. And why is that? Because everyone is born with a God consciousness, a God awareness. And it's with us from birth. And there's not an individual, but only God could have instilled that within every single human being that ever existed. If someone would please read Romans chapter 1 and verse 19. Romans 1 and 19. For that which is known to God is made manifest unto them. So from the very beginning, God has created within each one of us a God consciousness. An awareness that He exists. And when we look at Romans 1 and verse 19, once again, it testifies to what we already know in Genesis chapter 1. That it is literal, it is not figurative. And in verse 26, when God said, let us make man in our image, it was a literal act. It was a real act. So, and when he created man, he created within each one of us that God consciousness. Something that testifies that there is a God and that man was made by him. If someone would also please read Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes if I can ever speak. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse 11. Ecclesiastes 3, 11. So he hath made everything beautiful in his time. Also he has set the world in their heart, so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. So when we look at this verse, once again, it testifies that God created man. And when he did, he created within each one of us a God consciousness. When we look at this verse here, and I want to find the phrase. He has set the world in their heart so that no man can find out the work that God made from the beginning to the end. If we begin studying it out a little bit farther, that word world is actually eternity. So it could also read, he has set, the, set eternity in their heart. We are aware that there's going to be an afterlife. We know that there's something coming at the end. And who else, and why else would that be there, except for the fact that we know that there is a God consciousness. When we look at the world around us, even including, past, especially past civilizations, they were aware of that God existed, even if they had their own form of God. And they knew that there was an eternity that they had to make up for. There was an eternity that they had to be prepared for. How do we know this? Let's go back to ancient Egypt. How many of the pharaohs were buried with their soldiers, or sculptures of their soldiers, their wives, their children, their favorite animals? They were equipped with maybe tools. Why? Because they were preparing for the afterlife. If we go over to China to the first emperor, we know... If you look up the terracotta army, he had replicas made of his entire army, and they were buried in the ground, protecting his tomb. Why? He was preparing for eternity. He knew that there was someone and something greater than him. Why? Because he had a God consciousness. 
Everyone has, God has given everyone a sense of eternity in their heart. And this verse here supports the notion that God has instilled the God consciousness at birth. And we can see it, see it everywhere around us. It doesn't matter where we go. It doesn't matter what time frame we go into or travel into. We find men and women who knew that there was something greater than them. They had a God consciousness and they were aware without any written books or anything that there was an eternity coming that they had to prepare for. One of the greatest, one story that I like to share is taken from the Inca tribe by their chief. And I'm just going to go ahead and read it before I get all confuddled. But Pachacuti, he was the head of the Inca tribe of South America. And he was aware that God existed. He was along the rest, he along with the rest of the tribe worshipped the sun god Inti. They possessed many songs that did not pay ultimate homage to Inti, but to a higher unknown God who was the creator of everything. After he could not fathom how Inti could be concealed by a cloud, so one day he was sitting down and he was staring at Inti, the sun. And he was thinking about Inti. And then he watched as the clouds came by and they blocked out Inti's rays. They blocked out his sunlight. Well, if something could come along and block out Inti, well, there, there must, Inti must not be all powerful. He must not be the top, uh, must not be the top dog, so to speak. If he can be blocked down, he's not all powerful. So he must. There must be another god, tall, um, higher up than him. And as he began contemplating this, he began questioning this. He began questioning Inti's supreme power. They could not fathom how Inti could be concealed by a cloud, which was a product of creation. They showed that Inti could be hindered by creation alone. He also questioned Inti's on my presence because Inti could not be everywhere at the same time because light could not be everywhere because shadows existed. As a result, he began questioning Inti's authority as a god. He began researching his own culture for the answer. He discovered that there existed stories of another god that was higher than Inti and was the master creator of everything. Pachacuti Later held a meeting of the religious leaders to discuss this. They decided to worship the one true creator of everything, but Inti still to be, sh oh, be shown reverence. However, no one was to worship Inti alone. They were only permitted to worship the one true God. When I mean, you look at Paracuti, they didn't have the Bible. They didn't have religious, a church to go to. They didn't have anyone to bring them the gospel message, but yet they knew that a greater God existed. A ultimate God. How did they know that? Because God has created within each one of us a God consciousness that He exists. And no one is left without excuse. The second light that people have is nature. So we have God consciousness, but nature also proves that there is a God. If someone would please read Romans chapter 1 and verse 20. Romans 1 20. Good 
for you to do whatever you want, or to believe that there is no God, you're without reason. It has to be stopped. Why? Because even nature itself testifies that God exists. When we look at creation itself, it testifies to God's eternal power and his deity. When we look around us, we could have never created this. When we look around us, there is nothing that man could have conjured up to create this earth. There is nothing that anyone could have done to make it pop out of thin air unless they were God. Even nature itself testifies that there is a God. When we look at nature itself and how entwined everything is with how it works, let's look at the food chain. You can look at the air purifying system that God set up uh, within the um, earth itself, how water evaporates, go into the clouds, get cleansed, and then it comes back down. These aren't things that could just have happened. It doesn't matter if you believe in the Big Bang or not. I believe in the Big Bang. God spoke it. Bang! It happened. But other than that, something greater than us had to create this. It didn't just pop out of thin air. When we look at the Earth itself, the magnetic field is waning. What does this tell? What does that tell us? The Earth itself has an age. Earth, it, all of creation testifies to the fact that a God exists. And because of this, the heathen earth left without no excuse that there is not a God. Because nature itself testifies that there is one. God has done everything he can within his power to show man that he exists. If someone would please read 2 Peter 3.9. 2 Peter 3.9. So God is not willing that any should perish. And because of that, he has done everything he can from the very beginning to the person who's been raised in church to the person who has never even heard the gospel message, who may not have a Bible or any written books, who may not even have a written language, who may be off on their own in the middle of nowhere, to the individual who quote unquote, may even be born on Mars with nothing around him. God has instilled within every single individual and has done everything he can to reach out and say that I exist. He's given him nature. He's given him God awareness. God has done everything he, has, he can to think of that makes sure that mankind is not abandoned. Because when we get down to it, God has never abandoned mankind. Mankind has abandoned God, but God has never abandoned mankind. God longs and desires to commune with us, but there are those who have refused God every opportunity. God longs to dwell and communicate with us. He longs to fellowship with us. We see that from the very book of Genesis, from the very, very beginning. But there are just some people that no matter what you do or what they know, they don't want anything to do with God. And God tells us of that man's situation. And it's an extremely dangerous one. Romans chapter 1, verses 22 to 23. Romans 1, 22 through 23. So God said, because they didn't want anything to do with me, I let them do whatever they want. And we know that's not the only time that he's made that statement. I want to find it for myself and just... Because that when they knew God, so they were aware that God existed, they refused to glorify him not, 
and neither were they were thankful. So God left them up to whatever they wanted to do. And we find if we read through verse 25 that God left them worship nature because they did not want to glorify God. They didn't want anything to do with them. And if we go down even a little bit farther, we find the danger when they are left over to themselves in verse 26 and 27. We find another group of people who didn't want anything to do with God. It's not just idolaters, but it's homosexuals. Because they changed that which was natural and made it convenient for themselves. Now, it's interesting that when you look at the world around us, you look at a murderer and call him a murderer, it's not a hate crime. You look at a liar and call him a liar, it's not a hate crime. But if you point out the sin of homosexuality, which God states is a result because they chose not to know God in their own mind. They wanted nothing to do with him, so God left them over. All of a sudden, it's a hate crime. God will let us go our own way if that's what we choose. But he has done everything he can to reach out and draw us to himself. The heathen are not lost. God has done everything he can to reach out to them. He's given us a God awareness. He's even shown us to nature, through nature, that he exists. But still there are those that would rather do worship anything else but God. And when we look at Romans chapter 1, verses 19 through 23, we see the steps of becoming a heathen. And there's almost like there's four steps there. The first one is that they, they were left to go over to their own mind. They didn't want to worship God, and they wanted to do away with their God awareness of the ultimate God. And we find that in Romans 1, 19-23. I'll go ahead and read that again. But that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead. So they that are without exist, so that they are without excuse. But that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be fools, wives they became fools, and changed the glory of the corruptible God into the image of made like to corruptible man, and to birds and four foot of bees and creeping things. Verse 24 we'll read as well. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanliness through the lust of their own heart to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. The second point we see is derived from here in verse 20. The invisible things of him from the creation of the world clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power in God, so that they are without excuse. So we find second point is they are made aware that God exists through nature, but they choose not to worship God. They choose to ignore it. They want to do whatever they want. And moving on in verse 21, it states, Because they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became they in their imaginations, and their foolish hearts were dark, was dark. When we look at this, we almost get a glimpse back into time, back to the days of Noah. Because why? Because every man's um, imaginations and his heart were exceedingly wicked all the time. Why were they wicked? Did they not know God? No, they knew Him. But they chose not to know Him. They knew that God existed, but they wanted nothing to do with Him. And they were unthankful, and because of that, God said, you know what? You don't want me? Go do whatever you want. So, the next point is to worship nature rather than God. Their hearts were dark, darkened. Dark. It is here that the verse turns from informing about how God's awareness is made known unto the heathen to what happens when the heathen refuses to acknowledge this God awareness. They refuse to worship him as God and to recognize who he is. 
the, when we look at this verse, it acknowledges that the heathen once knew God, but they refused to acknowledge him. And because of that, God gave them over to their vain and foolish ideas. And it's interesting if we go down that because they wanted nothing to do with God, 